Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. For my first Bloomborough Commander, my awesome Patreon supporters voted for the infamous Cruel Claw, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three Weasel Mercenary with Menace, and whenever the Cruel Claw deals combat damage to a player, we exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a no-land card, and we can cast that card for free simply by discarding a card. So we can potentially even cast some huge Eldrazi and get their cast trigger as well, since we're actually casting it just by discarding a card and hitting the opponent with our commander, which is pretty easy to accomplish since it already has built-in evasion with menace, so it often just takes a single removal spell to clear path, which we kind of want to play to begin with, but we can also maybe provide other ways to make Cruel Claw unblockable in case the board stalls out a little bit. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories. By far the largest category are the payoff cards. These are the cards we're hoping to hit with Cruel Claw if we hit the opponent. We also have a subsection that are still cards we can maybe play for cheap, but are still nice to hit with Cruel Claw, so the flexibility is great. Then we've got our combo pieces, if you will. Ways to make Cruel Claw unblockable are very useful. We also have ways to stack the top of our deck, so we can put some expensive Eldrazi on top, hit the opponent, and then cast it for free to win the game. We also have ways to make our Cruel Claw have double strike, that way we can enable the ability twice, which improves our odds of finding something exciting. Then we've got our anti-control cards. These include cheap discard effects to take away opposing removal spells or counter spells, ways to make Cruel Claw uncounterable with our Cavern of Souls, as well as plenty of ways to give it haste. That way we can potentially surprise the opponent by playing Cruel Claw and immediately attacking with it when they may not be expecting it. Then we don't have a ton of ramp cards, since playing a 2-mana ramp artifact when our commander costs 3 mana isn't incredibly helpful, and they're also not the most exciting cards to find with the ability, so instead we have a few 1-mana ramp cards to maybe play a Cruel Claw on turn 2 already, and then other cards that provide additional utility, so they're still fine to play later. And then we've got a ton of removal spells, especially 1 and 2 mana removal, that we can play in the early turns to disrupt the opponent, as well as clearing a path for Cruel Claw to eventually start attacking. And then we even have a couple sweepers that can be one-sided. And then as we mentioned, the payoffs, which include as many of the powerful Eldrazi as possible, playing the 2 Ulamogs and the 2 Emrakuls, not playing Kozulak since that one's a little bit it's harder to hard cast since it requires colorless mana, and the newer Kozilek is not particularly exciting, so we're just going with Ulamogs and Emrakuls. So that's the deck in a nutshell. Now for the deep dive, starting with our combo pieces, we can make Cruel Claw unblockable in a multitude of ways, including with our land's access tunnel, which we can activate on turn 4 after playing it turn 3, so that lines up perfectly. Same with our manifold key, which we can play on turn 4 and immediately activate for 3 mana to make our creature unblockable. Thieves tools we can also play on turn 4 and immediately equip, making a treasure token in the process. And then a key to the city is only 2 mana to deploy, and then we can discard a card to make a creature unblockable. And then there's the Lorian Brooch, aka Trailblazer's Boots, which gives our creature non-basic landwalk, and most brawl decks will have at least one non-basic in play that allows us to sneak past all of the opponent's blockers. And then we also have a Wedding Invitation to give us a one-shot unblockable effect, also drawing a card in the process. Then we've got two ways to stack the top of our deck. Insatiable Avarice, if we cast it for three mana with Spree, can search for any card and put it on top, can also maybe draw additional cards with it if we want, but usually the goal is to just stack the top with Cruel Claw, and then a Scheming Symmetry also lets the opponent search for any card, but hopefully for finding an Eldrazi we can just end the game on the spot so it doesn't matter. Then Caustic Bronco also benefits from stacking the top of our deck, as we can maybe put something expensive on top, saddle it with Cruel Claw, attack, and then drain the opponent for a ton of damage. And then we've got our Double Strike Enablers, Lizard Blades, also just a 1-1 creature with Double Strike. And then Amber Cleave can also give Trample in addition to plus 1 plus 1 and Double Strike. So also allows us to maybe attack past opposing blockers, even though it's a little pricier to get down, since we don't have a lot of attacking creatures in this deck. Then our anti-control cards include some discard spells, Duress, Inquisition, and Thoughtseize at one mana, as well as a Grief, which is part of our payoff cards as well, which we can potentially evoke by pitching a black spell. Then we've got a few haste enablers, including ways in our mana base. Arena of Glory by far the best one, since it doesn't require any additional mana, simply need to exert it. Then there's the battlements, which will require a bit of extra mana. And then we've got some equipment with Lava Spur Boots and Swiftfoot Boots, also protecting our commander with Hexproof or Ward. 
and then we've got a bitter union which can discard and draw maybe get rid of some expensive cards that are stuck in hand and then for one mana we can sacrifice to give our creatures haste and then a cavern of souls is also important naming weasel or mercenary usually more fun to call the opponent a weasel to make our cruel claw uncountable and then our ramp cards include Ugin's Labyrinth, which can sometimes pitch some expensive artifact or Eldrazi, so it can make two mana, just a nice little upside, but not a strict necessity. And then a Dark Ritual, on the other hand, can set up a turn two Cruel Claw pretty easily, so that one's always worth it. And Ragavan, if we can play it, especially if we're on the play and hit the opponent to make treasure, we can set up a turn two Cruel Claw, which is always fun. And then we've got Arcane Signet as the only two mana ramp artifact I'm playing, since it can immediately tap for any color of mana, so it's usually still fine, even though it kind of goes against the philosophy of not playing any. And then a Fable of the Mirror Breakers, still useful, can let us loot, and the Shaman can give us extra mana in case we need to redeploy Cruel Claw after it gets removed. And then Chandra can also come down, maybe take out an opposing creature, and then start adding mana, so it's also a way to maybe hard cast some of our six and seven mana cards on the following turn. And then we get to our removal, where we have Cut Down and Fatal Push in black. In red, there's Galvanic Discharge, which is basically just three damage to creatures or planeswalkers. Cannot go face unlike a Lightning Bolt, so this one's still a little bit better. And then we've got at two mana Bitter Triumph, as well as Shielder's Edict, which can also hit opposing planeswalkers, so the flexibility is great. And then my other favorite two mana removal spells include Go for the Throat and Heartless Act, since these are usually unconditional. And then we also have a Braid, which can go after artifacts. And this member can also be cast for one or two mana if we are willing to pay a bit of life, which is fine. And then a Toxic Deluge, another nice addition from Modern Horizons, as potentially a one-sided sweeper. And Gix's Command can also grow the Cruel Claw, or just deal with the opponent's creatures to clear path. And then our payoff cards include our Evoke Elementals, a Grief as a discard effect. Fury can also clear a path by pitching a red card from our hand. Then we've got Valky, which we can also play early to have a look at their hand, maybe take a creature that would get in the way. And then later we can also maybe cast Tybalt or hit Tybalt with Cruel Claw. And then a Carnosaur we can discard to deal 3 damage, but also fine to just cast and discover into something else. And then the Flesh Gorger we can cast for 3 mana early, but can also be a nice hit as a 7 mana 7-5 seven with Menace, Lifelink and Ward making the opponent pay life. And Virtual Persistence can also be another cheap 2 mana removal spell, or a 7 mana enchantment that can also start reanimating all those expensive creatures that we maybe discarded to the Cruel Claws ability. So usually it's a good habit to discard your most expensive creature when you first hit the opponent with Cruel Claw. And our remaining payoff cards include a Liliana Dreadhorde General, which can easily win a game by herself. We've got Bolas of Citadel to start casting spells off the top of the deck by paying life, can also be very fun. Combustible Gear Hulk, if the opponent decides to take damage, could just win us the game on the spot if we get lucky, or we might draw three cards from it. We've got Itali Primal Storm, which is also nice to give haste to, so it can start attacking and casting cards for free, and that's another way to cast our own spells for free as well. There is a Morog to give us additional attack steps, so we can maybe attack with Cruel Claw multiple times in one turn. Rakdos, Patron of Chaos, triggers at the beginning of our end step, so we get immediate value if we find it with Cruel Claw. We've got Breach the Multiverse as a way to reanimate creatures and planeswalkers, including the opponents. Shielded Whispering One, another way to reanimate our own creatures as well, after maybe discarding them to Cruel Claw's ability. Hit to Mother Load can provide a lot of value, leaving behind some treasure tokens as well, if we maybe hit some cheaper card with it. There's Captive Audience as a fun Rakdos win condition. Overwhelming Forces as a one-sided sweeper that also draws us a bunch of cards. Then we've got our two demons, Avilus and Gristlebrand, which can both draw a lot of cards. We've got Cityscape Leveler, which also has a cast trigger that we get to benefit from if we get it with Cruel Claw. We've got Portal to Phyrexia, immediately wiping the opponent's board, and then another way to reanimate our own creatures. And then finally, our four Eldrazi Titans, Ulamog the Ceaseless Hungers, probably the best one, as it can immediately exile two opposing permanents, including the opponent's lands. We've got Ulamog the Defiler, a great if you get to untap with it. And then the two Emrakuls, the world anew, stealing the opponent's creatures. And then the promised end, stealing the opponent's turn. And then the rest of our mana base has just lots of basics, lots of dual lands for fixing, and as many fetch lands as possible to fix our colors. Can also go get our theater to surveil one, can also maybe help stack the top of our deck. And then a blood crypt can also take two damage to have access to either swamp or mountain. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does.
Okay, we're on the play, facing Yarok the Desecrated. It's been a while since I've faced it. Our hands got ways to make unblockable, way to give haste. Although no removal or other cheap interaction. So we're pretty all in on just Cruel Claw getting us there. Which may or may not work. Turn one, I can surveil or play Manifold Key. Turn two, Boots. Can wait until maybe turn four to play Cruel Claw with haste if we're afraid of removal. Yeah, I'll try it. And then I think instead of playing key, since I can't activate key the same turn we play Cruel Claw, we can keep it a surprise and for now just surveil and maybe look for a bit more interaction. Although turn two boots seems likely. I'll keep a land on top as well, a fourth mana. It's gonna help us maybe play key and activate if that's required. And we can do a bit of a vibe check here to see if our opponent's likely to answer Cruel Claw. So far lots of green mana. So I'm tempted to still play Cruel Claw, that way if they play an extra blocker next turn we just go key activate. Since the boots is not going to be incredibly helpful there. Yeah, let's maybe give that a shot. So for now just play Cruel Claw. And then hope that they don't have removal for it. A Lotus Cobra in two. Cavern of Souls naming Elemental. And a Reclamation Sage blows up my boots. Pun does have two blockers for Cruel Claw, but as it turns out, we still have our Manifold Key as a nice leftover. A Labyrinth, I could pitch Flesh Gorger if we want an extra mana. Sure, why not? Could come in handy. So next turn I can maybe cast Liliana. And we found a brooch to give a non-basic land walk. Do I even want to cast it? I think I'm actually better off just keeping all my cards so I can curve Liliana into a breach potentially. And we already have Manifold Key to make him blockable. So I'm gonna decline. Opponent can play Yarok this turn. And decided to play Busage instead of maybe going after Manifold Key because they had a Chupacabra. Alright, fair enough. So I think we leave Cruel Claw in the graveyard in the hopes of getting it back with Breach and Multiverse, although we are pretty likely to hit something that's better. So I'll still go Command Zone. And then Liliana can just plus make a zombie. Fury isn't bad either. Has to be the play now. I can take out pretty much everything except for Loam Speaker, so they can still play Yarok. But then Liliana's Minus is looking a lot better. So we can go ahead and cast Fury. Could also just answer the two mana creatures and leave Chupacabra Reclamation Sage. But if we want to set up the minus four a little bit better here, I think this still makes sense. And pass a turn. All right, points go to Geruda, so now they might end up with another creature. Which, uh, yeah, looks like they hit a Crater Hoof Behemoth. So now Liliana's Minus is not gonna clear the board anymore, and Ulamog is also indestructible. Could still get around it with a uh, Sacrifice, but not for as long as they have that extra creature in play. So that's tough. So now I can Breach the Multiverse, hit Itali Craterhoof Behemoth, that's kind of fun. Although it's not like Itali's gonna have haste. But it might still be better here than Liliana minus four, leave them with an Ulamog. Although if they attack down Liliana, then Breach can get Liliana back, so that's kind of fun. Yeah, I guess Craterhoof wouldn't be all that exciting. 
Could get back a Chupacabra as well, take care of Giruda. But then the minus four once again is going to be a little shy of uh, dealing with our board if they play Yarok. So it's a tough call. I think Liliana minus four is still reasonable. And then we get to draw Fury Dying. And then I wouldn't mind if Ulamog finishes off Liliana. They do get to exile a bunch of cards, but not a huge concern when we've got 100 to start out. Alright, so I can breach the multiverse, I can even Inquisition first, just to make sure that there's nothing that can stop us. Right, they've got witness to maybe get something back. And then Liliana still has to be the pick, although Shieldred's tempting on the opponent's side. Let's see, what if I get Chupacabra, then we're still not answering Ulamog. Although never mind, I could get Chupacabra and then Shieldred, and then they have to sacrifice Ulamog, and then Shieldred can reanimate Gristlebrand and Villas. Go to the opponent's turn, Shieldred triggers, opponent has to sack Ulamog. And they also have a Swamp, so Shieldred's unblockable. Now is there anything they can get back with Witness? Opponent just going for the Slicer. Now if we reanimate Ulamog we don't get the cast trigger, so going for Gristlebrand is probably better. Opponent making a duplicate of our Breach the Multiverse, so next turn they can cast it. Can maybe find a discard spell with Gristlebrand in the meantime. So let's start drawing. Found an arena, although Gristlebrand's already in place, so can't give that haste anymore. Dark Ritual, Grief. Alright, Grief will do it. Can go ahead and play the arena. And then Valky can also take Timeless Witness if we'd like. Let's start by casting Dark Ritual. Play Valky. Check out their hands. Take the Witness. And then I can grief pitching something. Just to take breach the multiverse. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing the Gidrog monster, a notoriously powerful commander. So I'm gonna need a decent hand. We do have two removal spells early, which is fine. But no hand disruption to take away an opposing removal spell, no way to give Cruel Claw haste or hexproof. So I think this is still a mulligan despite the removal spells which are decent. Alright, this is better. We've got the turn one thought seize. Turn two can either bitter triumph or play the blades. And see yeah, Veil of Summer would have been very effective had they been able to keep up green mana. So, no removal at least. So, at this point, Veil of Summer could still be okay if they can maybe protect their creature from a bitter triumph later. Or I can take Arcane Signets and then take away their ramp. And then the plan is just to curve into Cruel Claw and maybe even give it Double Strike. Opponent found another ramp spell, but as far as we know, they don't have removal. And Thief's Tools also gives us a way to maybe make Cruel Claw unblockable. Alright, so big turn here. They can also play Skewed Swarm, make a token to have multiple blockers. But then they would be trumping. So just a Spelunking into a Calling Garden, making a plant actually. 
but that's not gonna stop our cruel claw. And uh, yeah, let's equip and get two attacks in. Revealing Emrakul, the world and you. That counts. And we're not done yet. So we steal their plant token for starters. And once again. How about a portal to Phyrexia? Alright, and then discard a tally so I can reanimate it with portal alongside my gristle brand, which I just discarded. So, pretty insane start. And that's good enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Aragorn, the Uniter, a four-color deck. Our hand's quite promising. We've got Dark Ritual, the rest to maybe take away a removal spell. Could also maybe set up a hasty Cruel Claw with the boots. So turn one, I already have to decide if I want to Dark Ritual. Could go Ritual into Signet into Boots. And then next turn, still can't quite play Cruel Claw with Haste, but we can duress, and then the turn after, turn three, play Cruel Claw with Haste. That's one way to do it. Could also just go turn one duress, and then turn two, play Cruel Claw with Ritual, since we'll have a bit of information with the duress to know if it's worth going for. All right, Staggering Insights, Ember Cleave, and then Sentinel and Shanna they can play in the meantime, so they might actually have some early blockers. So that could get in the way of Cruel Claw. I'll take the Insight, since it's going to be a while before Ember Cleave comes down. And Sentinel. Alright, so what's our plan? If I play Cruel Claw next turn, our opponent plays Shanna. And they'll have two creatures to get in front of Cruel Claw. And we could basically take the trade if they'd like. They'll have drawn an extra card of Sentinel in the meantime. Or I can play the Boots, and then our opponent's more likely to attack with the Sentinel. And then next turn I can Ritual out Cruel Claw and equip it. That seems better to me. Even though they get to draw Sentinel twice. We just need to get lucky and hit something expensive with Cruel Claw to take over. Sentinel attacks. So I can even uh, pay the one for Sentinel if I don't want to play Arcane Signet. Although, honestly, playing Arcane Signet might still be worth it. Since it sets up Gix's Command next turn. So I'm gonna decline. Play Signet. And then I guess I don't want to show them access tunnel yet since they may leave more blockers back. And get something like uh, Blood Crypts. Basic might have been fine too. And then Cruel Claw equip. And hits Heartless Acts, so that should work. What's more annoying, Sentinel or Shanna? At this point, honestly, might be the Sentinel. And then forces can go since we're not close to casting it. Bowden might play Aragorn and play defense. And then I have the option of Gix's command to clear their board. Or I can activate Access Tunnel and get a free attack in, but uh, Gix's command seems good. So, highest power and two or less. So yeah, taking out Sentinel last turn meant our opponent didn't get to draw a card here, and yeah, that's good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Helga Skittish Seer deck. And they're also playing Karuga, so only expensive cards. We have a pretty decent hand with Arena giving haste, Fatal Push and or Grief for interaction. For now, I guess we're not in a hurry to Fatal Push knowing they're playing Karuga, but I can also wait on the Grief. 
And then we're mostly interested in taking away a counter spell. So for now, we could surveil. And probably don't need Sulphur Springs. Find a bitter triumph. So yeah, can wait another turn on Grief. So we can pair it with Cruel Claw with haste. Opponent's got nothing. All right, so let's see what they're working with. Probably pitching Liliana at this point. Could also get rid of Fatal Push since we're going to struggle to enable Revolt going forward. Although we can always discard to the Cruel Claw's ability. Opponent with a Tide Binder to counter Grief's trigger. All right, that's fine. Still got our opponent tapped out, which is what matters. They have to make sure to counter the correct trigger, otherwise they get to leave Grief on the battlefield while still getting to make them discard. All right, so get in for three and hope for the best. Yeah, Crystal Brand's pretty good. Fatal Push can go, or we can get rid of Ulamog since I'm probably not casting that one. And then maybe draw seven now in case they have another way to counter my trigger. Alright, not bad. And then discard to hand size a bunch. Couple of lanes can go. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Surak Dragonclaw. Our hand doesn't have any castable spells, so we'll mulligan. This is a one lander, so this one's also kind of rough. Mulligan again, and we've got to keep. Shieldroot can go, since at least everything else I can realistically cast or discard. And we can even start by surveilling. So turn two Bronco into turn three Cruel Claw could be a reasonable starting point. Given that they haven't presented anything to Heartless Act. And I'll keep a Dragon Skull. Opponent also with the Arena of Glory, so will have to watch out for hasty creatures out of nowhere. Serac makes their creatures uncounterable and gives them Trample. All right, opponent with a Salvala. So we could play Cruel Claw, but then Bronco doesn't have a good attack. So I'm not opposed to just abrading Salvala and then taking a bit of a risk on this Bronco attack, since it might end up costing us a lot of life. Uh, I guess we also have the option of Carnosaur discarded, which is maybe better since it uses up all my mana. And then I can maybe wait to set up a hasty Cruel Claw in a turn or two. I luckily reveal the land, so no damage. And then next turn we could play Removal Spell, play Boots, and then turn after a Cruel Claw with Haste, perhaps. Right, Bandit 3 for 2 deals with Bronco, gives him a treasure. So I'll stick to the plan. Now Surak, they can flash in at instant speed, but it's still only one blocker. But if they keep up mana, it could also represent author interaction for Cruel Claw, so then I may not feel comfortable trying to play it here, even with the boots. So yeah, that does put us in an awkward spot. And our opponent does indeed just pass the turn. Alright, I think I still go for it, since we're not doing anything else here. And hope they can't remove it. That worked. Now if we hit a removal spell, there's no target in play yet. So I'm hoping to hit something expensive. That's maybe a creature. Alright, we hit a grief, so can still play it. A braid can maybe go at this point, since we're not too far from hard casting hit to mother load. And then see how Roxanne can deal 2 damage when it enters. Xenagos represents a lot of damage with Serac. Kiora can draw, Kogla can fight. Quake Mole, so yeah, that's a lot of heavy hitting creatures. So just double checking here with Serac. Just trample on their creatures and they cannot be countered. So they're gonna have that in play and then untap Xenagos to attack for 12. 
how much devotion would they have? I guess they would still only have six to red and green. So that's not animated yet. Roxanne, pretty good with the treasures, cleanly takes out grief. So maybe Roxanne's the pick. And then we have creature removal if they play Kogla. Still not a disaster since we have Heartless Act in hand. Yeah, I'll take Roxanne. And then still want to keep boots on Cruel Claw. So there's Surak. They also had to use their treasure. And they can go for Xenagos. It's going to be the Quake Mole instead. They can also use Kogla and Hidoro to discard my boots at some point. But for now, either Access Tunnel or Heartless Act. Heartless Act makes a little bit more sense. And then we'll take out the Quake Mole, I think. And both Menace creatures can attack past Surak. And we hit Morag, perfect. So play that. At this point, maybe discard hit to Mother Load. And then I could still play a land, letting me attack once again and untapping my creatures in the process. And that's how you can easily take over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Burgi, god of storytelling, often built as a storm deck. Our hand's decent, we have an answer to Burgi, way to give haste. And I can start by surveilling. Warlord's Fury will draw. So we can expect lots of cantrips that basically replace themselves, since they also make a mana with Burgi. Probably don't need an extra land. Alright, so we've got ways to make Cruel Claw unblockable as well. For now, maybe play the boots, since they may not be expecting Thieves Tools equip on turn 4. Could also play Fable first if we want to keep our Cruel Claw a little bit more protected from opposing removal. Alright, now with Arena of Glory we can actually give it haste. Maybe worth it, since I can still play Fable next turn regardless. Yeah, that seems fine. Could also still go with a Fable plan and then next turn Cruel Claw equip the boots. But uh, this is more fun. Since we have the chance of hitting something big, hopefully not a removal spell. All right, just a wedding invitation. And then sure we'll cast it. And draw a card. So if they answer a Cruel Claw will be a little sad, but we can still follow up with a Fable. And then maybe once again play a Hasty Cruel Claw on turn 5. Bonin Cycles Forgotten Cave, so they're maybe looking for answers. And they found one Lightning Bolt. Hitting a couple other cards. Ah, that's too bad. So back to the command zone. Did not get rewarded for playing the arena here, but so it goes. Play Fable next. Opponent could finally deploy Burgi. And if they have a bunch of one mana cantrips, they could already do some damage here, but we'll see. For now, Faithless looting. So unlikely to see them storm off. They would need Burgi into like a Mox Amber to keep going. So opponent's still setting up. And if they keep a mana, they could answer the Cruel Claw once again. It's gonna be a Fist of Flame just to draw a card. Okay. So yeah, we can go for Hasty Cruel Claw. Fatal Push can probably go, so can Deluge still have Virtue to answer Burgi. And now a dismember as well. Alright, I can also just attack cast Itali with a treasure. Although it's going to be without haste. So, yeah, maybe it is just Cruel Claw hasted with Arena. We'll get a treasure. So if I draw land next turn, I can still play hasty Itali. Although, never mind, I guess I wouldn't have the mana to equip boots. So, yeah, I mean, I could also just attack and then play Cruel Claw, equip the boots second main. Just not quite as exciting as potentially spiking something expensive. 
So once again I'll go for the exciting play, even if it may not be the correct play. And, well, we definitely got rewarded here. Ulamog, thank you very much. Don't need Thieves' Tools anymore, exile two of the opponent's lanes, and there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Feather the Redeemed, a deck full of pump spells. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we've got a removal spell at least. A Braid could maybe hit some other creature and Thieves' Tools to make them blockable. So I'll try it. If the opponent has their own removal, we could be in trouble since we don't have a way to protect our Cruel Claw at the moment. So I'll be surveilling here, looking for a discard spell or some other way to maybe protect our commander. And Breach can go. So for now I can play Thieves' Tools, since it's going to be another turn before they play Feather. And, uh, yeah, play Cruel Claw. Hope it survives, pretty much. Alternative was immediately taking out Fencing Ace before they can untap with it. But I'm okay if Fencing Ace sticks around for a turn. Ah, opponent just tapping out for Feather. So now we can easily clear a path or just suit up the Thieves' Tools. So I definitely want to take care of Feather so we can start there and then attack with Menace. And then see where we're at since I might find a removal spell with the ability. So then I don't need to waste my Braid. And we had a Wedding Invitation. Alright, not the best. Gristlebrand can go. And that's a lot of land, so I'll deal with the Fencing Ace before they can maybe protect it with a Pump Spell. And then we've got multiple ways to make Cruel Claw unblockable between Access Tunnel, Thieves' Tools and Invitation. So that's not a concern. And yeah, Pona's got to Reckless Rage, one of the few Pump Spells that's also a removal spell. That's too bad. But at least I didn't get it back with Feather, which would have been worse. So play Cruel Claw once again. And pass the turn. Alright, take our turn. Opponent's hanging back here. Still probably worth it to equip the tools in case they can make a blocker at instant speed. If they're just hanging on to removal then it's better to attack first, and then if they take out Cruel Claw, I can at least still replay it. Yeah, I don't think I go for Unblockable, let's just attack. And then I guess I could still sack Wedding Invitation at instant speed, if they do make an extra blocker here. Alright, that worked. And hit an Itali, not bad. And that's good enough, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Chandra, Awakened Inferno, so a red control deck. Can expect them to have lots of removal, lots of ramp in the form of artifact. So our hand kind of needs hand disruption, plus ways to give Cruel Claw haste. Those are kind of the priority. This hand has a reanimate to cheaply get it back. Don't think I'll need Virtue of Persistence. And then we've got some 6 drops, which at least at 6 mana we can still hard cast them. But yeah, this hand is far from ideal, so I'll take a free mulligan. This is a little bit better. We have a duress to maybe take away one removal spell. Hopefully they don't have a second. Probably have to keep this one. And then I could duress on turn 1, but since we don't have a turn 2 play, Maybe it's fine to wait a turn, maybe give them the chance to draw into a removal spell that we can then take. And I'm fine if they just play a ramp artifact. So I can surveil. And Avarice I'll maybe keep. So let's see what they're working with. Alright, so Zariel can make devils but does not immediately answer Cruel Claw, so maybe go for Burndown. 
And then I kind of have to fetch another black source if we ever want to cast this for triple black. Although more likely that I uh, just set up the top of my deck for Cruel Claw. So I can get a Blood Crypt and then still Bolt end of turn. And then we have ways to make them blockable as well, but right now our opponent doesn't have many creatures. Oof, that's a very unfortunate. Chandra takes out Cruel Claw and now also gives him a way to ramp out six mana Chandra. So yeah, that's probably game over right there. Back to the command zone. Heartless Act doesn't do much in this matchup. So how can we recover? We don't have triple black to draw with Avarice, can only set up my top deck. So maybe I get Arena of Glory to give Cruel Claw haste next turn and go for a Hail Mary. Yeah, maybe that's the way to go. Since I need a fifth mana source, so I think Arena is my only realistic option. And then uh, they shouldn't have enough blockers next turn. So Regulator lets them activate Chandra abilities an additional time. So they're gonna make mana to play another Planeswalker here. Gonna be an unexpected windfall. So they are not happy keeping Zariel. Opponent foretells, oof, is this a demon bolt? It must be. So they actually found an answer to Cruel Claw at instant speed. I mean, there's not much I can do about that. So yeah, opponent maybe correctly figured out that they needed to find more instant speed removal and they actually got there. So is there anything else I can do? Besides just go for Cruel Claw, I mean, can't really cast Morag yet. Next turn, Awaken Inferno comes down. So if this is indeed a Demon Bolt, we certainly lose, but I still have to try. Small chance at something else, but nope, opponent's got it. GG's. Well, trying to into Demon Bolt was incredibly rough, especially after checking out their hand with that duress. But uh, yeah, control decks with lots of creature removal are going to be a tougher matchup, since you need that hand disruption to clear a path, or maybe a way to immediately attack with Cruel Claw when they're tapped out. And creature removal, especially against a Planeswalker deck, is not going to get you very far. So yeah, this is going to take couple turns for the opponent to close out, although at least the Regulator will speed up the kill once they get Awakened Inferno down. And at 7 mana, I don't think we're uh, gonna get to replay our commander. So for now, can play a key to the city. Another Chandra that can make mana. I won't stop fighting till the people are safe again. Let's bring things up to a simmer. Give a toast? <laughs> I'd love to. This matchup also showcases why I've been putting such a priority on removal spells like Shouldred's Edict and uh, Bitter Triumph that can also hit planeswalkers. Because otherwise these are just going to be dead in a matchup like this. Aww, looks like getting... <laughs> so we can activate key even without a creature in play just to pay two and draw a card next turn. Is that something we're interested in? Yep. You're going down. Maybe our best hope is still just top decking a land and playing a hasty cruel claw. Although I don't really see how we beat three planeswalkers. But that might be the way to go. Alright, actually found the land. So somehow I still get another shot at it. Opponent's got one card in hand, so hopefully it's not yet another answer. But yeah, seeing the value of Arena of Glory, one of our better cards for sure. Got to exert it three times. 
could also play a hasty Morag and actually, you know, attack down their planeswalkers, but that's no fun. Go face and hope to hit some Eldrazi. Hit the Mother Load. Get rid of a Heartless Act. And now a Virtue of Persistence can cast the Enchantment Half. And that could actually start reanimating our creatures. And then I can discard Morog or Villas to key to the city to reanimate them next turn. Although I kind of wonder, had we gone for Morog with haste, with the additional landfall triggers, would have been able to take out multiple planeswalkers perhaps. But I believe our opponent can just close out the game here. With all the Chandras dealing damage and the regulator. So yeah. At least we still got to connect with the Cruel Claw. Just wasn't quite good enough. And Chandra just dealing damage. Finds an invasion of Kaldheim. But just an attack here will do it. So it felt like the game was decided pretty early on. But uh, we still had a tiny chance of turning it around if we got incredibly lucky. GG's. Four Chandra emblems can finish us off, or our opponent can just attack here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Bonnie, blue-green ramp. So, yeah, we've got some early removal to try and clear a path for a Cruel Claw. Don't expect too much interaction from our opponents, plus Valky can also take away a creature. I do still need a third land, however. But if we do, Avarice can also set up a devastating turn if we connect. So I think this hand's got enough potential that I should try. Maybe would have been a little bit better on the draw compared to the play, since we had the one mana removal. And that way we're more likely to get to three mana. But uh, I'll play a Valky. See what they're working with. Just the information is valuable. And our opponent's got a pretty slow hand. No ramp besides Uro on three, and then I guess Oracle on four. So what do we take? Taking Uro could be fun. So Valky can eventually turn into an Uro. Or we can take their cheaper creature that they can already cast next turn, although Discharge can take care of it. So sure, I'll take Uro. And then, yeah, next turn... It only costs 3 mana to turn Valky into an Uro, I believe, so... That might just be the play as opposed to playing Cruel Claw. Although now with the Lizard Blades, Cruel Claw could be pretty epic. So sure, we'll just go for our commander. And Swamp is fine. So best case scenario, our opponents cannot produce another blocker. And we draw land to play an equip blades onto our menace creature. Well, so far so good. If they drew into a bounce spell, I'll be sad. I guess we can also set up Avarice which is maybe still better. Instead of randomly hitting twice, we get to hit once, but we get to decide what to keep on top. So let's try that. And then what's the best card to put on top right now? Probably just an Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Exile two of their lands. Could have also discharged the Beast Caller so Valky can attack, but we'll see if this works. Looks like it. And what do we get rid of? Other Emrakul, maybe. And our opponent scoops it up. Nice, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Balin, a tokens deck. So this could prove to be tricky to attack past, since our opponent's gonna have lots of blockers. Luckily we've got one of our sweepers, Toxic Deluge, so that should help. And then Arena for haste as well, so a very good hand for the matchup. Turn 2 can either abrade or play Bitter Union. Don't need to show them the Arena yet. 
Alright, now with Halfling, I think it's reasonable to just abrade the Halfling itself. Although if our opponents play some sort of token maker that makes two one ones, they would still be able to block a hasty Cruel Claw. But I think it's fine. Alternatively, Bitter Union, and then maybe wait on Cruel Claw, and then in the meantime, cast a Deluge. Ah, opponent with a Welcome to Sweet Tooth. So they only have one blocker, which means we can attack past it with Menace. And hopefully hit something juicy. Alright, a Thought Seize. Not the most exciting card, but I'll take it. And a Leveler can go. Alright, opponent did have a Lightning Bolt as it turns out, so we can take that away. Although next turn they will have a couple blockers available. So if they play their commander, it does have three toughness, but don't want to take out our own Cruel Claw with Deluge. Although maybe if we cast Deluge for one or two and get rid of their smaller stuff, we can still attack past Balin with Menace. Still need a third land that enters untapped to cast Deluge next turn. Alright, we did not. So instead we can Bitter Union to maybe hit our land drop for a turn. And Liliana can go. All right, it's going to be a theater. So, swamp on top at this point. Do I keep it? I think so. And then I'm not going to attack. There's a chance your opponent can play Wandering Emperor next turn if they have another white source. And that would be a good answer to Cruel Claw that I can't take away with Inquisition. So that is potentially a reason to just trade now for all their tokens. And then next turn I can just replay a hasty Cruel Claw. Yeah, I think that's fine. And since we kept on top, they're more incentivized to trade here. Since they're scared that we kept something expensive on top. Opponent may be considering just double blocking. Nope, triple block makes more sense. Okay, so the trade happens. Back to the command zone. But we've got a, another shot at a hasty Cruel Claw next turn. Arena of Glory putting in a lot of work. For now, Charming Scoundrel maybe making a treasure token. Yep. And the Gala Greeters. So our opponent does have two blockers. But they would have to chum block to stop the Cruel Claw. And yeah, I guess that's good enough for the opponent to just throw in the towel. Fair enough, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Rashmi, Eternity's Crafter, and we've got a very nice hand, both Thoughtseize as well as Arena for Haste. Theater will come into play tapped, however, but it does give us a mountain for Arena, so I'll keep. And then probably start with Theater. Way to turn on Thoughtseize, keep land on top. Although we could also just play a two-drop like Valky to see their hands. And then keep Thoughtseize for a turn where we can cast it alongside something else. Although the main concern would be a counter spell. Although if our opponent plays a counter spell, we can still play a slightly different game. So I'm okay playing Valky here. And they may not expect a hasty Cruel Claw. Opponent does have a Mana Drain as it turns out, and the Island to keep it up. So I'll take the Provisioner and incentivize them to play Bramble Familiar instead of keeping a mana drain, but uh, again we've got Thoughtseize to eventually take it, so it's not a huge concern. And then we can also turn Valky into a Tireless Provisioner at some point, which will be useful. So opponents keeping up their counter spell means no Cruel Claw this turn. Instead, I probably still want a Thoughtseize before casting a 2-drop so we don't give them as much mana, so we can start by attacking. If I wait to Thoughtseize until next turn, we make sure that they didn't top deck into another counter spell. Although if they keep two counter spells up, I guess we still have the same issue. So this is fine. Opponent's probably going to mana drain since they don't have another way to spend their mana. Saves us two life, I guess. And then now, maybe go Lizard Blades. 
Alternatively, I could have also just passed a turn with a plan of turning Valky into a Provisioner to kind of waste the opponent's mana. But I'm happy enough letting them play rush me if it means we get a hasty Cruel Claw. And then just Cruel Claw attacking here. Let's hope to get lucky. A removal spell would be fine too. Combustible Gear Hulk isn't bad. And then Gristle Brand can go. So is our opponent going to let us draw three or potentially take a ton of damage? Alright, opponent took 10 damage to the face. So they're at 10. We milled Shieldred, Heartless Act, Symmetry. Put on now with a Curator. Revealing Narset. And a Familiar, so they are tapped out. And uh, yeah, I can make a creature unblockable if I draw a land here. So no point in activating the Provisioner. Just gonna play Brooch. And I wanna say suit up Cruel Claw still. Could also give Cruel Claw double strike actually, and then opponent's gonna have to double chump. Is that better than just guaranteeing a hit, and then our opponent still probably has to chump with a creature on Gear Hulk? It's kind of an interesting uh, spot here, but the guaranteed card from Cruel Claw might still be worth it. Opponent chumps with a familiar. And then next turn I could give Cruel Claw double strike. In the meantime, we hit Trumpeting Carnosaur, so I'm okay discarding Liliana, even though we're close to casting it. We've got other ways to spend our mana. And now we're pretty likely to hit a removal spell, hit a boots instead. So it could have been better here, but still hit something big. Opponents at seven. And they're in chum block mode, so they need something special. Bonnie is a good card, but it's not gonna save them from the Brooch. Next turn with uh, Temporal Sundering they could maybe go off, but uh, hopefully there wouldn't be a next turn. And now the most fun we can have is Lizard Blades reconfigured onto Cruel Claw, even though there might be a different sequence that guarantees lethal, I guess. What I can do is also suit up Cruel Claw with the Lava Spur Boots. So it actually hits for 8, but at least we'll get to see one more trigger. Alright, so we got to see our Cruel Claw in action, and the deck certainly delivered. Good to cast our fair share of Gristle Brands and Eldrazi, so can't complain. We've got about a 50% hit rate, maybe a little bit less, to hit something expensive when we do finally connect with Cruel Claw. And uh, yeah, the main hurdle is removal from the opponent, since we have lots of ways to make Cruel Claw unblockable or just clear a path to connect with Menace. So that hasn't been a major concern, but just opposing spot removal or counter spells are the main way the opponent will have to interact with our combo. But overall, quite impressed with how the deck performed. So from now on, if you face Cruel Claw, make sure to mulligan into a hand that has answers. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.